A circuit court judge in Virginia has ruled that fingerprints are not protected by the Fifth Amendment, a decision that has clear privacy implications for fingerprint protected devices like newer iPhones and iPads. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman is here with more. Good morning to you, Ricky. Good morning. Start off with this ruling. What exactly was this case about that led police to say, we do have the right to make you put your phone, fingerprint on your phone and unlock it? Well, there's a man who is accused of domestic abuse, that is, strangling his girlfriend. There's video equipment that is in the house. So he has a mobile device that has a fingerprint possibility on it of mm -hmm. opening it. So the police say, look, we may have evidence of exactly what he did on this mobile device. So we want to get into this mobile device. So what the judge ultimately says here is this, look, if you have a passcode, we cannot let the police get in. But if you have a fingerprint, and mm -hmm. only a fingerprint, that allows the police to look at this, well, that's just too bad. The police get in. Because it's physical evidence which they're allowed to collect? Indeed it is, Anthony. You could get a law degree. Thanks, Bruce. This is a very good basic concept of the law. The Fifth Amendment is testimonial. And what we're saying is this. No one under the Fifth Amendment can be compelled to give evidence against themselves. You can't be compelled to incriminate yourself. We know that from every TV show ever, anything you say can be used against you. However, physical evidence, that is, it could be blood, it could be a fingerprint, it could be DNA, a voice uh, exemplar, those things are not testimonial. They're part of your body. Right. This is obviously not as binding as a Supreme Court decision, though. So do you think that we would, because, I mean, there's two phones already, the iPhone and the Galaxy. They all have f uh, this option of just your fingerprint. Do you think we'll now see some sort of change in legislation? Well, I really think that um, law enforcement is certainly going to look about change in legislation. What we have to remember is this. Privacy advocates and good people everywhere don't want the police rummaging through their mobile devices. You may have private information. You could have your financial records. You could have photographs, videos. We don't want the police in there. On the other hand, we don't want the situation where the police cannot get in when they have the appropriate suspicion or probable cause to look in. You've got to remember this. It's not only that a person says, I don't want you in my phone, so I'm not giving you my password. It's even if the police get a warrant that you cannot force Apple, Google, Android, you cannot force them to then open up the phone. So we don't want a situation where people can go free. What about terrorists? What about kidnappers? Mm -hmm. What about the school shooter? What if there's stuff in that mobile device that the police need? The privacy advocates are very happy with Apple, Google, others who control over 95% of the market. Right. And the, well, so there's a bind there, but with, the, with, the, with those passcodes, that if it's a number, you can't get in, right? No, if it's a number, you cannot get in. And it's also why law enforcement is looking to do other things. Do we want to change legislation? Do we simply want these, P these companies like Google and Apple to agree with law enforcement that in certain instances they should be able to get in? Right. So it's that balance, civil liberties versus privacy, Always raises tricky. its ugly head again. Always but Anthony's tricky. learning. He's almost yeah. a lawyer. I got my degree yeah. from the Ricky Clement School of Law. Yeah. Thank you, Ricky. <laughs>